Ant-Man Quantumania came out today on digital release, that kind of stuff. So I figured, all right, great. I'll watch it. We'll do a whispered review, and that'll be great. Fantastic. I started that movie hours ago, and I still have gotten not even halfway through it. It's been that unengaging. I just keep clicking off. I keep going to a YouTube video, doing something else. I'll pick up my phone, I'll play this, I'll play that, whatever. You know, anything to not watch this movie. Not that I hate it so far. I hate parts of it. I hate the fact that it is a literal Rick and Morty episode where they're legitimately ripping off plot points from the last couple of season or seasons of Rick and Morty. Thanks. I'm pretty sure this is written by a written Rick and Morty writer. Wow, way to go, guys. You did an incredible job. You're being incredibly creative. Way to go. I hope you got paid millions and millions of dollars to do this, and you will continue to get an absurd amount of work and fame and recognition and loan support from a bunch of complete lunatics. Oh my god. So, as you can tell, this is probably going to be more of a rant than a ramble, and it's going to be directed more towards the general state of the Marvel universe, whatever, I don't know, the franchise realistically is what we're talking about here, because the universe is already destroyed. It's unfortunately, it's just, it's completely annihilated. The entire premise of the multiverse, uh, I mean, it's not new. It's been in around in, you know, pop culture, sci-fi, fantasy, that kind of stuff for, I mean, like more mainstream type stuff, at least 20 years, at least 20 years, easy. And most of the time, the gripe that people have with it is that it devalues the story that you're being told because every story that is being told to you is as meaningful as all the other ones which means that they're all meaningless because in every story where the good guy triumphs there's one where they lose all the sacrifices that are being made in this one oh my god Bucky died oh my god uh, Black Widow's died. Okay, well, in another one, she lives. In another one, Hawkeye dies. In another one, blah, 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 blah. You get it. Where it's just, it, it becomes completely meaningless and foolish and stupid, and it devalues all of the good things and all of the character moments and all of these types of things that come into it. And we feel, as an audience, tricked. We feel that we have invested our time, our money, our attention, and potentially our emotions, our love, our caring, our, our you know, our you know, our feelings. And they have been squandered. They have been thrown away, they've been thrown to the wind, and they've been, you know, completely disregarded. And no, they don't matter anymore. Not, nothing you do matters, nothing any of these characters do matters, nothing anything matters. That is the general objection to the idea of a multiverse in stories. Now, that being said, it's been, I think, done fairly well in other, uh, you know, fictional universes and these types of things. Elric, Michael Moorcock, uh, being the prime example of, you know, really good usage of a multiverse type theme, and in other places it's been done, uh, less destructively like I just finished I just finished watching Farscape they've got unrealized realities and so they've got a multiverse there Stargate you know they're they're there they exist that being said you generally don't think of that as a multiverse kind of story they generally speaking are not really focused on that much and when they are they're you know, they're, they're, they're thrown away or they're done in such a way that the uh, theme of the main universe is basically 
carried through to the rest of these other universes so that there is a, a thread that connects them and that makes the things happening in the main universe that you're watching relevant and important to the multiverse as a whole. With Marvel, uh, we've yet to figure out if that's going to be the case, but uh, because of the horrible decisions that Marvel tends to make and has made in the last... Oh my god, what, only three years, but it feels like it's six or seven years since Phase 4 started, that, you know, their track record is so bad that you would only, you would assume that they can only mess up, they can only do it poorly, and therefore setting themselves up this huge, giant, ridiculous challenge of making the multiverse relatable to audiences, as well as, you know, uh, story-wise constructive instead of destructive is well beyond their capabilities. That seems to be where we're going. Now, that being said, they haven't really gotten to that point uh, in the movie, about halfway through. What they have gotten to is Modoc. He just got introduced. Um, Wow, how badly is your CGI budget hurting? Did She-Hulk take up that much resources? Because it looks so bad. I don't think anyone is surprised by this. I'm sure you've seen screenshots of other people, you know, reacting to this and going, oh my god, how bad does this look? It's terrible. But that being said, they have a lot of these issues of like, why are you trying to make this look a certain way as opposed to making the story more interesting? You're, you're substituting, you know, bombastic CGI scenery for good storytelling. And they're not substitutable. You can't swap them in and out. One of them is fundamental to everything you're doing as a, you know, creative storyteller. The other one is interesting, decorative filigree, if done properly. And if not done properly, it's a gauche, loud, noisy, in-your-face, gross assault on your senses. And it tends to be, in this movie at least, more along that line of it just being like overdone, overblown, unnecessary, and just a, a distraction and we're not distracted we're not distracted obviously I'm not distracted by the scenery and then sucked into it and engaged in it and I'm forgetting the bad storytelling elements that are coming in the fact that these rules that have been established before are being played loose and fast I'm not distracted and so these things become unfortunately a detriment they become painful to look at as opposed to beautiful to look at or at the very least interesting to look at they're not they're just ugh. They, they hurt they hurt to look at they hurt to hear especially when again it's not even creative it's not even new it's basically the exact same thing that we've seen in like the taika waititi thors um which, again, shows the degradation of the MCU. These things are becoming samey. Why? How? How is it possible that, what, 80 plus years of comic book history and incredible storytelling by, you know, an enormous array of different talents has become samey bullcrap on a, a scale, on a stage where you've got exponentially more money to do whatever the hell you want and it's not like these directors are not getting creative freedom Taika Waititi on his second freaking movie has total creative freedom and hundreds of millions of dollars to play with okay this is Peyton Reed's third movie in the MCU and this is what he's doing with it Bro, are you that out of ideas? Are you that lazy? I can't imagine that's the case, but it seems like the only possible 
explanation here. And it makes me lose my mind. It makes me lose my mind because there are so many people out there that want to tell stories, that want to be creative and artistic, and would put their heart and soul into these things for no remuneration. For just, I mean, like barely breaking even to like be able to pay their bills. They would, you know, work a hundred hour weeks and do whatever it took to get these things done. And yet you're over here making garbage and you're doing like a crappy job at making garbage. And yet you're getting, you know, paid to do it. Uh, it's just, it's horrible. It's really, it's, it's so disheartening. Especially because it not only, you know, reflects badly on the profession as a whole, but then it's also, it's taking something away from me and, you know, anybody else who enjoys the, you know, the, the fantasy of the MCU. You know, the, the sort of shared collective, okay, I shouldn't say shared collective fantasy. It, it kind of is in the sense of the MCU. For me, it's my own personal world. And I like watching these movies as a touchstone to re-immerse myself in that world. But you're destroying it for every single person. You're degrading it. You're making it so that that world is now gross and grimy and corrupted. It's tainted by these terrible movies that are freaking unwatchable. Like Thor Love and Thunder is unforgivable. It has done absurd amounts of damage to the point where I don't even consider it canon. I basically go, look, Phase 4 didn't happen. If I go and rewatch these movies, I, I'm cutting out an enormous amount of the things that they've made in the last, well, basically everything that they've made in the last, what, three, four years. Now, for me, that's fine. And I'm able to go, yeah, you know what? That stuff doesn't count. I completely compartmentalize it, cut it out of my brain, and it doesn't affect me anymore. Guess what, though? It affects your franchise because it affects your money. You spent hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars, on making these movies and then promoting them, and you're going to lose most of it. That means that your franchise is going to be destroyed, which means that you're going to be forced to become more and more desperate, more and more appealing to terrible ideas, terrible people, and terrible concepts to try to recoup some of that money. And I know some of it is legitimately going to be, hey, you know what, we're going to take a loan out. And it's going to be, hey, you know what, we're going to promote this issue or that issue in our movie. So because of that, you, the government, owe us money. That's a real thing, and it happens. I think it's called ESG or something like that. Uh, and it's terrible. It's awful. Because it really is, it basically shows that your company is bankrupt and then it devalues your, you know, creative properties even more because they are now the slave to the whims of whatever issue is dominating the day. That's no way to make art. In fact, generally speaking, that's the exact opposite way to make art. You're I don't want to say your job as an artist is to be transgressive. That's not true. But it is to a degree you must be aware of the transgressions against the status quo. And you have to be able to make a, a coherent argument for or against that. Because that's what you're doing as an artist. Is you're trying to basically say, look, is society on the right path? Or is it on the wrong path? Is it going you know, forward? Is it going backwards? Is it going towards the light, towards the dark? Where are we headed? And you know, it's basically going, okay, hey, the transgressive, the, the, the correct role of transgressive and transgression acts in art is to go, this is where we're heading. This is a bad place to go, and this is where we're going. Don't go there. Because 
because this is what it's going to look like. It's going to look like, uh, you know, an Aldous Huxley. It's going to look like, you know, some dystopian, uh, you know, a horrific hellscape. Or, hey, look, this is a good thing that we're not doing right now. This is a thing that we could be doing. We could be pushing for this, and that would be a good thing. This would be a good place to be, but we're not doing it. You have to draw the eye to those things. Now that's, you know, a thematic point that, uh, you know, I think a lot of artists try to go to. You can also just be entertaining, you know, that's good. That's a good thing too. Uh, but that's generally speaking, not what people say they want to do as artists. They're not really looking to entertain. They're looking to educate. They're looking to illuminate, to elucidate, to push people's consciousnesses in, you know, bigger, better, further directions. Which is, you know, okay, fine. But you're not doing any of these things. You're you're failing on every single one of these fronts. And it's a huge problem. Because you're destroying yourself monetarily. You're destroying yourself creatively and you're destroying the things that we as an audience love in the process why are you doing these things are you just that incapable i can't imagine that's the case but i mean if it is take a look in the mirror and go yeah you know what maybe i'll step away from this maybe i'll do something else and hand the reins over to someone else who would love to do it and guess what disney they'll do it for cheap They'll do it way cheaper, baby. All right? Yeah, like me. You're looking for somebody there to do it. I'm not saying I'll do a good job, but I'll do it for free. All right. So with all of that, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in for this impressive rant. Uh, it's probably going to be late because, like I said, uh, I wasn't able to get through the damn movie. And therefore, this is probably like an hour later than it normally is. Uh... So, thanks. I applaud you for making it to the end, sincerely. Not sarcastic.